Bill Common Miner throwing it to an absolute red hot slammer of a top 10. One of the best ones we've ever had yet. So, fasten your seatbelts, it's gonna be a rocket ride. 10. Atomic by Blondie. See, I told you. Blondie were currently ruling the world at the moment with Call Me, but Atomic was a very tasty appetizer for that here in Australia. Blondie were a group that never let themselves be locked into a style. They never picked a lane, they just swerved all over the road like drunken horses who'd hired a renter for the weekend before they caused a wreck and Debbie would just flash her green eyes and smile and they'd just keep on driving. Until the Hunter album where the wheels finally fell off. Number 9. Crazy Little Thing Called Love by Queen Freddie may well have thought he was prettier than Debbie, and he had a pretty sweet hit to back it up. Making its farewell tour of the charts after four weeks on top, this is one of Queen's most fun and popular hits out here, and after Bohemian Rhapsody, their biggest. Number 8. Rock Lobster by the pride of Athens, Georgia, the B-52s. Another song that's been enduringly popular, this one has a story for me. One night we were driving home after a music festival, my oldest Isaac, my sister and I and Rock Lobster came on the Spotify feed, so we all had a jolly old sing-along. Now, I've always heard the words, everybody had matching towels, as everybody had magic towels. So I sang that line with gusto. All of a sudden, the singing stopped what did you say? asked my cruel son. I sheepishly repeated the line. Half a second of silence and then the two of them erupted in maniacal laughter for the next five minutes. Down the highway almost all the way to the turn off to home. Usually I defiantly still sing my lyrics if corrected. But since that day the words magic towels have never passed my lips. Number seven, He's My Number One by Christy Allen. And another story. In the late 1970s, the local industry began to search for lightning to strike twice and throw out a second Olivia Newton-John. The candidate had to be a passable singer, pretty, and pliable to the producer's design. They got lucky with Christy Allen, a far better than passable singer, and someone who was genuinely popular in the very insular and catty Australian industry. She had two big hits, the rather excellent Goosebumps and this pleasant enough slice of pop disco fluff. Christie had largely withdrawn from the business by 1982. In 1998, when Mushroom Records boss Michael Gudinski was planning the 25th anniversary concert for the label, he couldn't locate Alan and he had everyone he knew called in to track her down as he felt the celebration just wouldn't be the same without her. Gudinski got his girl and she came close to stealing the show in front of 80,000 people. That having been said, it is hard to steal a show though when the festivities include Kylie Minogue, a birthday cake and a very flattering red kimono. Music fans across the nation were shocked and saddened in 2008 when Christy passed away from pancreatic cancer. At number six, here's where we first heard the slurry purr of Chrissy Hine, the flower of Akron, Ohio. Brass in Pocket was their first hit, their second, however, single, and it's really one they've never much come close to with that level of swagger. Soon enough, brashness took over, and somewhere along the line they settled into celebrity survivor mode. But this, and the dazzling debut album it came from, was still a wonderful high water mark. 5. Michael Jackson Boogie Oogie Oogies his way in with Rock With You, a swishy disco confection and a follow up to mega hit Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. A great song but it never really did the business its illustrious predecessor did, getting no higher than this and barely going 3 months on the charts. At number 4 are one-ish hit wonders The Motels with their vaguely disturbing total control recently covered by the rather splendid and back to form Missy Higgins. While Total Control flopped totally in the US, not even making the Hot 100, their US hits barely scratched the top 40 here. Coming out of the same scene as the Go-Go's, the motels totally lacked the charm and spunk of their former rehearsal space mates, and for all intents and purposes, this, their biggest hit, 
is now that Missy Higgins song. Three, moving up the charts to its chart peak this week is Janice Ian's slick Munich built Fly Too High, which surprisingly makes a successful merger between her folky lyricism and a pulsing Giorgio Moroder groove. The third of her four top 50 entries, this was her biggest hit, surpassing her Moby at 17 from 1975. The surprise hit of the year, Pink Floyd's Another Brick in the Wall Part 2, taken from their deeply divisive The Wall album. Certainly memorable, although hardly representative of Pink Floyd's overall contribution, this song is like a standing illustration of how charts work in smaller markets. On the chart I'm looking at, which covers most of the big retailers and chain stores, Another Brick in the Wall makes it to number two. On the city's rival charts, which covers the indies and particularly the stores on the west side where hipsters tended to buy records, it's number one for a month. Nationally, this week, it's number two, where it stays for three weeks and is knocked off by Brass in Pocket, which only made it to number three here. Anyway, enough of this conspiracy theory Tommy rot. Let's go big on the fantastic facts. Top riser this week, up 16 spots to number 16, is Same Old Girl by Daryl Cotton, once of the 60s, early 70s heartthrob Zoot, who also gave us Rick Speak to the Sky Springfield and Beeb I Was the Guy in the Little River Band, Bertles. Daryl Cotton passed away in 2012 from liver cancer. The most dramatic drop this time is former number one, Dreaming My Dreams of You by comeback queen Colleen Hewitt which fell 10 spots to number 31. Everyone who listened to the radio in the early 70s loved Colleen Hewitt, but it must be said this song gets on my nerves something awful. The highest debutante this week was The Boys Light Up by the Great Australian Crawl, who continue their tradition of not taking pop music star maker program Countdown very seriously at all. Their previous single, Beautiful People, was recorded when James Rain had two broken arms in plaster casts after he was hit by a car in Melbourne. And for this one, Rain made one of the worst possible attempts to fake harmonica playing ever recorded on live TV. As for how this song didn't manage to get itself banned, especially here in Brisbane, for its salacious lyrics, I just have no idea. And the longest lasting record on the charts this week is another X number one, KC and the Sunshine Band's dreary Please Don't Go. Numero uno in both the USA and the UK was Call Me by Blondie. Just to prove that we Aussies know nothing, this one got no higher than number six out here. And for the cashed up lads and duties around town, they were splashing the cash for True Colours, Split Ends' magnificent magnum opus, one of the greatest Australian albums ever, even if it was made by a bunch of New Zealanders, I still play it regularly. It's glorious. Speaking of glorious, it's time for the world's most intelligent monkey. He served as ambassador to Peru from 1992 to 1994. He runs a medium-sized chain of photocopies and print stores and reached the semi-finals of the only ever monkey Wimbledon. All this talent and he plays drums for us. It's Monty the Safety Monkey. Monty, give him a bashing. Number one this week was those magnificent NZ's split ends with the song that, even for the consistent excellence of the True Colors album, was the standout track, I Got You. A nervy, edgy slice of new way with a chorus that hangs in the head long after it's gone so beloved is the song that Crowded House still keep it in their playlist and brought the house down with it at the recent Blues Fest. And there we have it, happy comrades, a banging good week of rock classics in the top 10. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments below, but even more, I'd love to see you again next time in the foreign country of the past.